In this example, we, cons we consider Marissa and her optimal allocation of a monthly budget of $80 that she could spend on um, some combination of movies and books. And in this table, we have the utility that she gets from different numbers of movies or books. So if she has, let's say, one movie, it gives her a utility of 50. If she has three movies, it gives her a utility of 100. If she has two books, it gives her a utility of 41, and so on. So we, our task is to figure out how many movies and how many books should she spend her $80 on. And for now, we're going to assume that both movies and books cost exactly $20. Okay, so the way we're going to approach this is through marginal analysis. So marginal analysis focuses on the margin, meaning it considers each purchase one at a time rather than thinking as a, at the aggregate level. So we need to first figure out the marginal utility of each movie and each book in order to then determine uh, which purchase um, would be the best first choice. And from there we can proceed with the second, third, and fourth purchases for a maximum of four movies or books purchased. All right, so the marginal utility of a movie or a book is just going to be equal to the change in the overall or total utility when she buys one additional unit, so over the change in quantity, right? So for instance, when she goes from having no movies to having one movie, her total utility increases to 50, so that means the marginal utility of the first movie is 50. Then when she goes on to a second movie, her total utility increases to 80, so that's a change of 30, right? We go from a total of 50 to a total of 80. So her marginal utility of the second movie is 30 units of utility or 30 utils, if you want to call it that. All right, when she moves to a third movie, now she has a total utility from the first three movies equal to 100. And so that's an increase from 80 to 100, that's 20. So the marginal utility is equal to 20 for the third movie. And finally, if she goes to a fourth movie, her total utility increases to 110. So going from 100 to 110 is an increase of 10 units of utility. So you see that her utility is actually, um, or her marginal utility starts out at 50 for the first movie, drops to 30 for the second, drops to 20 for the third, and finally drops to 10 for the fourth. So this is diminishing marginal utility. That's what we're seeing play out here. The more movies she has, the more she, the, the less she values each additional one, the less benefit or utility each additional movie gives her, even though even the fourth movie still gives her utility. All right, over here on this side, looking at books, we do the same exercise. So the first book that Marissa buys gives her a total utility of two, 22. So her marginal utility is 22 for the first book. When she moves on to a second book, her total utility increases to 41. So we go from 22 to 41. So that's an increase of 19. Right? When she goes to a third book, her total utility increases to 52. So from 41 to 52, that's an increase of 11 units of utility. And finally, when she goes from a third book to a fourth one, her total utility increases to 57. So that's a marginal utility for the fourth book equal to five units. Right, so again, we're seeing that diminishing marginal value or diminishing marginal uh, benefit uh, to books as well as to movies. Right? Okay, so now our big task is to allocate her $80. And um, you know, both items cost $80 or $20, sorry. So a, a movie costs $20. A book costs $20 and she has $80 to spend. 
So marginal analysis dictates that we're going to spend $20, then we're going to reassess and spend our second $20, reassess, and so on until we've spent all of the $80 budget. So for the first $20, okay, we need to decide between a movie and a book. So a movie will give Marissa a marginal utility of 50, while a book will give her a marginal utility of 22. So since 50 is greater than 22, we're gonna go with that first movie, because that's how she's gonna maximize the utility she gets out of that first $20 she spends. All right, so we have now bought the first movie, and so now we have our second $20 to spend. Okay, so now she can either buy a second movie, which will give her a utility of 30, or she can buy her first book, which will give her a marginal utility of 22. So here, once again, the marginal utility from a movie at 30 units is greater than that from a book. So Marisha should buy a second movie. All right, so she's bought her second movie. And now we consider the third purchase. So she can either buy a third movie, which will give her a marginal utility of 20, or she can buy that first book, which will give her a higher marginal utility of 22. So that's what she would wanna do. She'd wanna go with the book, right? She gets 20 if she gets another movie, but she gets more 22 units of utility if she gets that first book. All right, so she's bought that first book. And now we she spent um, $20 on the first movie, $20 on the second movie, $20 on the first book. So she has $20 left, right? So for that fourth purchase, what is she gonna buy? She can either buy her third movie, which will give her 20 units of utility, or a second book, which will give her 19. So clearly 20 is higher, so that's what she should go with. So 20 is greater than 19, so she should go with a third movie. All right, and now she spent all of her money. All right, and she has three movies and one book. Now, another way we could have figured this out um, is if we had actually calculated the marginal cost of each item, and then we could have used our rule of thumb that we should only do things up until the point of where the marginal benefit or marginal utility equals the marginal cost, and we should stop doing something, so let's say stop buying movies, if the marginal cost is going to exceed the marginal utility. And same for books. So how do we figure out the marginal um, cost of, let's say, the first movie? Well, if Marissa has $80 to spend and movies and books each cost $20, then at most she can get four movies or four books or some combination, but she can, she can buy up to four items. All right, so if she buys, um, let's say, just one movie, then she's giving up a potential book. So if she were buying one movie, then she would be getting three books and giving up the fourth book. So the value of that book that she would be giving up by buying a movie instead, that marginal utility of her fourth book, five, that is the marginal cost in this particular setup of the first movie. All right, so let's um, let's write that here. So five units of utility is the marginal cost of her first book. Um, the marginal, or sorry, the marginal cost of her first movie. All right, now what if she bought a second movie? Well, then she would have to give up another book, and that book that she'd be giving up would be this third one, so she'd be giving up 11 units of utility here by instead spending that $20 on a movie, right? So that's 
the marginal cost of the second movie, right? And so on. If she buys a third movie, she gives up, uh, she gives up this second book over here. So the marginal cost of the third movie is the value of her second book. And finally, if she goes with a fourth movie, she can buy no books. So the value of that first book that she's now giving up is 22 units. So that becomes the marginal cost of the fourth movie. All right, similarly, if we're calculating the marginal cost of books, right, if she buys one book, she's giving up one of her possible movies, which she values at 10 units. So that becomes the cost of the first book. If she buys a second book, she's giving up this third movie. So this value of that third movie becomes the cost of her second book and so on. If she gets a third book, she's giving up this movie, which she values at 30. And if she gets a fourth book, she's giving up her one and only movie at that point, which she values at 50. So plugging all that in, we get the marginal cost of books is 10, 20, 30, and 50, right? Again, that's just coming from this column over here. It's being transposed here. So we go 10, 20, 30, 50. All right, so now that we have all these numbers laid out, um, recall our optimal allocation of books and movies. Three movies and one book is what we determined originally as her optimal allocation. So she wants to get the first, the second, and the third movies, and then just the first book. Okay, so compare the marginal utility and marginal cost of that third movie. Right, the marginal utility is just a little bit higher than the marginal cost. Okay, but if she had gone on to a fourth book, the marginal cost of, or sorry, a fourth movie, the marginal cost of that fourth movie would have been greater, 22, compared to the marginal utility she would receive from that fourth movie. So it wouldn't make sense for her, it would be irrational for her to buy a fourth movie. Right? In contrast, when you look over here at the book that we decided she should be optimally buying, right, the marginal utility of that book is greater than its cost. But if she were to go on and buy a second book, the marginal cost would now be greater at 20 compared to the marginal utility of 19, right? So, so this, um, the fact that the marginal cost is being defined as an opportunity cost, right? When you buy a book, what are you giving up in terms of the other, the value of the other thing, right? And when you buy a movie, what are you giving up? in terms of the value of the other option, right? That then leads us to this um, ability to figure out the optimal allocation that's going to maximize her total utility, right? And in this particular example, her total utility um, for, let's say, for, let's see, three books um, gives her a total utility of 100, and the one um, book gives her a total utility of 22. So the overall total utility is 122. Okay, if you look at any other possible combination um, of, a, of four items with books and movies making up some combination other than three and one, you're not gonna get the same level of total ut utility. You're gonna get something less. For example, if we said um, she gets two movies and two books, right, then that would give her a total utility of 80 plus 41, which is equal to 121, which is less than where she ends up if she follows our recommendation of three movies and one book.